everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be working in Jasmine Beckett Griffith's book and I am going to show you how to color black hair. Now this video is going to be a little bit different because if you saw yesterday's video where I showed you how to color leaves, in that video I was bringing some of the content from my previous videos where I showed you some different uh, color combinations and I had done a video previously also where I showed you some green color combinations. I had mentioned in that video that those color combinations, the green color combinations, would be beautiful if you brought them to your coloring book and use them on leaves. So yesterday I brought you a video where I showed you how to bring those color combinations to leaves. So today in this video I'm doing kind of sort of the same thing previously in my tips and tricks and hacks on how to improve your coloring skills series I did a video where I showed you how to create black without actually using black. So today we are going to take that and we are actually going to apply that to hair and we are going to color black hair. So not only are we going to use that little quote unquote hack that I showed you and create black, but we are also going to do a hair tutorial. I am so excited to get started. I have the page picked out that I'm going to color in this Jasmine Beckett Griffith coloring book. This book had the cutest little kind of postcard sized um, pictures to where I could just still be able to color all of the hair to show you exactly how it's going to look, but it will save time in the video to where I don't have to color a big huge page. So that is what we're going to do today. If you enjoy videos like this, please do make sure you subscribe and turn your bell notifications on. In the description box below, you will find a link to my email list as well as my Facebook group and my Patreon if you would like to support me over there. And as always, no matter how you support me, whether it is through watching my videos, through Patreon, using my links down in the description box below, or even sending me a sweet gift in the mail, I appreciate all of you. Let's go ahead and get into this video. What we're going to be working on today, I thought we would go ahead and do this little fairy up here in this corner. And the reason that I chose this particular fairy is one, because I've got a very little bit of hair to where I could just kind of show you the technique and it won't take me that long so that I can fit it all into one video and not just kind of color half of her hair and then leave the rest or whatever. Although I may speed the other half up to music, but I love doing that because it kind of shows you how it all just comes together instantly and it looks really, really cool on video. I love watching videos like that when colorists do that. So I like to do that a lot on my channel as well after I do the tutorial portion and that way you can follow along with both sides if you have this book or even if you want to go get a book of your own or another book you want to color in and you want to follow along. But the reason I chose this one is because not only that, but she has a lot of areas in her hair where I'll be able to show you exactly where you should leave the white to where I feel like the sunlight would be kind of hitting her hair and she would have highlights. I think that these two little buns on the side of her head just give me a chance to be a little bit more creative when I'm coloring her hair just to kind of show you guys exactly where the highlights will lay when you're doing something like curls or braids or you know in this case buns. So in the last video I showed you all how you would create black and to create black you would use indigo blue and dark umber. The way that you do that is you just kind of blend one color over the other and the two of these colors together create black. Now you do have different ways that you can create black on your coloring pages and sometimes black has blue in it, other times you can use something like gray or you could even do a black that has red tones in it if you wanted to. You can do your black however you want to do it, but in this case, most of the time, black has a lot of blue in it. If you look at um, somebody maybe that is Asian and you really look closely at their hair, you will see or you will notice that their hair actually has a little bit of a blue tint to it. If you go to 
uh, dye your hair and you buy the straight up black hair dye and you apply it to your hair, you will notice if you look at your hair really closely, your hair will have blue in it. It will actually look blue. So with that being said, we are gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start on this side of her hair. So I'm gonna start up here at the root of her head. And I'm just gonna kind of start using this flicking motion. And I'm gonna lay down the indigo blue. I love doing hair in this book specifically because I feel like I could get so much more creative with it because I could kind of just draw in my own lines and such and that's why I use this flicking motion but you can see now that I'm adding this um, dark umber in and I'm putting it over the blue you can see that it is starting to actually turn black. Now I would imagine that right here through this center area right here, she would have a good amount of highlights because I would imagine that the light is kind of hitting her head up there in that area. But I'm going to leave a lot of that there and I'm just going to continue with my flicking like motion here. By the roots, if you look at your hair or look at anybody else's hair, you will notice that the roots, which is the newest hair, is always going to tend to be much darker. So I'm going to reflect that in my coloring. And here over in this area, I'm just trying to make this a little bit darker in here. Just because this hair here is actually sitting up behind where this bun starts to form. And I'm going to come down and what I'm doing is I'm just kind of tracing some of the lines that are already in place by the artist. I think that I need to sharpen this one you need to when you're doing hair you need to make sure you keep a very sharp lead just for the sake of that flicking motion that I'm using where I'm going back and forth and it's like I just kind of want it to look like individual hair strands and I'm turning my pencil back and forth as I do this. And I'm coming back over where those lines are again, where they've already been created. And I'm going towards the center here where I wanted to leave that highlight, but I'm not coming all the way into the center. I'm just kind of very lightly pulling that flicking motion to the center so that I could leave this area of highlight here. Now do you see how fast and how quickly this is just all coming together? 
I love coloring in this book. I don't know why I don't color in this book more often. I actually had forgotten that I had this book. Let's come back and add a little bit more of this color and then just like up where I did it up here on this part I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna go over this um, indigo and I'm gonna come in here and I'm just going to make a little bit of a darker shadow in here And then I'm going to come back with my flicking motion again. And where I see a lot of the blue, I'm just going to kind of go over that. And I'm just kind of getting right in here and making it darker. Oh, I love how that is turning out so far. Anywhere that I see blue and the blue is more pronounced I'm just gonna make sure I come over it with my dark umber because that is what turns it or that's what uh, blends the colors together to create the other color and I know I've been um, talking about a lot about that in my previous videos where I tell you guys even if you only have a smaller set of prismas it is possible to make so many more colors and you do that just by blending colors together And see how I'm just kind of, I don't think I'm even going to have to bring any other color into this. Because look how awesome the highlights look already. And I want this highlight here to stay. So I'm just going to come in here with the dark umber. Probably going to need my eraser here. And again, I'm just turning my pencil just to try to keep that sharp lead. And then let's come back in with the dark umber. But her hair is coming together so quickly. And it looks so pretty. But do you see how just using this flicking motion just makes such a huge difference? Now right in here I want a rather big highlight. And I'm just kind of going to, in a way, kind of connect to these two pieces here, even though the artist didn't. Because you guys know I always like to just kind of put a little bit of my own twist on things and just be a little bit creative and see there I just kind of went out of the lines but that's okay you guys don't ever worry if you go out of the lines 
get out your trusty little mono eraser that I tell you guys about all the time and just get in those little tiny spots and lift it up. Where is my eraser? But like here where I went a little too far over, just come over there and just erase that right out. And then of course when I come back and I do the wings, it will go over that so you'll never even notice it. So that's my cool Mono Zero eraser. You guys know I rave about that all the time. It's wonderful. So now I'm just coming back here and I am just going over all these areas where I see or feel like there is too much blue showing through. But do you see how I just make sure I leave those highlights in there? I think I really, really like it. And uh, let me just see where I left this highlight right here. That's a little bit too much of a highlight. So I'm just very lightly, barely touching the paper. I'm gonna come over it a little bit. So now it kind of has a little bit of the dark umber. And then I'm going to come over it and add a little bit of the indigo blue. And so now it looks really good. And see, I'm using the white of the paper, but I'm still using my two colors. Like, this is a really cool lesson, guys, because I'm using two different colors to create the black. I'm still using the white of my paper to create the highlights. And I did all of this with just two pencils. Is that so, so cool? So let's go ahead and do her bun and I'll show you exactly where the highlight should go in her bun. So in this area here that's kind of to the center of the bun, I would imagine that that is going to be darker. So let's go ahead and come around here and start following some of these lines. But I still want to, even though it is um, going to be darker, I still want it to look like hair. So I'm still going to keep coming back with this flicking motion. And I need, still need to make sure that I am blending those colors in together so that I'm creating black. And it's dark enough. And I'm using a little bit more pressure here with my umber. And I want to go around the outside here of this bun just to really add that definition in there. But this part here, I would imagine, is going to be much darker. And then this area on the outside, I would assume, is going to have a little bit less highlights, or a little bit more highlights, rather. Whereas the part to the inside of the bun is going to have less. So 
So let's go ahead and come over here and do this area. And I want quite a bit of highlight here because I would imagine the sun is coming down from this direction and hitting her head this way. So I really want my highlight all in here. And I want quite a bit of a highlight in that area. So I'm gonna start coming down by just tracing where the lines already are. Now, if you notice, I don't know if you watch a lot of artists on YouTube, but you'll notice that a lot of artists on YouTube, when they're drawing out hair and such, they will use polychromos rather than prismacolors because they tend to hold a much sharper lead. And so it makes it much easier to be able to um, create that texture in the hair and make it actually look like hair. That's why when I'm using my Prisma colors because they are so soft and they do not hold the sharp, sharp lead as much as the um, Polychromos would. I'm kind of just, that's why I keep just kind of turning my pencil as I go just to kind of preserve that lead a little bit more so that I don't have to sharpen my Prismacolor away. But I may actually want to try this with my Polychromos. I really want this inside of her bun to be rather dark to make it kind of really just stand out. And to do that, we just keep layering these colors over one another, just so that it will still look like it's the actual inside of her bun. I know that some of you have been having trouble getting a hold of this sharpener. And I've reached out to a doll and I've been actually in communication with them. And these, this specific pencil sharpener here, the one that is black with the gray, like mine, um, that one is very low on stock, but they have another one right now that is limited edition. And they say that they have quite a few of those available. I put the link in my uh, Facebook group today for all of you that have been struggling to get this sharpener. It is a wonderful sharpener. I really think that every single colorist needs one of these. I, oh my gosh, it is life-changing. When it comes to your Prismacolors, it is literally life-changing because I used to have all kinds of problems where I would just keep sharpening and sharpening and sharpening, and I was just losing my pencils, and I thought it was an issue with the pencils. Like so many people complain about the Prismacolor pencils and how they're so soft, and they just keep on sharpening away till they have no more pencil left because they just continue to keep breaking inside the sharpener. Since I have gotten this sharpener, I have never, ever, ever had that issue again. It is the best sharpener I have ever, ever, ever tried. So let me try to get a better angle here so I could get her bun done the way that I want it done now that I've got nice sharp leads. Okay, so I want a lot of highlight like right in here, but I still want a little bit of color in there because I don't want my highlight to look just completely white. And to do that, just like I did before, you just kind of come over it and you barely touch it. And it will leave quite a bit of a highlight. And then here, where I want to really show that texture and definition in her hair and to make it really look like hair, I'm just going to come down a little bit with quite a bit more pressure. on my pencils. 
see if I just keep coming back over here and going back and forth with each of these colors and making sure that they are blended together thoroughly. I think I've gotten so used to coloring on PDF pages that it is making it so much more difficult to color in a book <laughs> with all the flipping back and forth. I think I have the right angle now and you guys can hopefully see what I'm doing but I'm adding quite a bit of more darkness to create more contrast right in here where we are framing her face. And that is allowing me to really get a really great highlight in this area. And then here in her bun. And I want to come around this way. And I want quite a bit of a highlight here, but I still want to keep that texture so that it still looks like hair. So we're using the white of the paper, but we're not leaving all of the white of the paper. And I'm just kind of bringing this down just below where I have, see like this line right here where I had said that it was like the inside of her bun. I want to make sure that the inside of her bun is very pronounced so that I could tell after it's colored that that is actually the inside of her bun. But I did leave a little bit of a highlight there in the center, if you could see that. And I'm just coming back over these areas. And I'm just kind of coming off this line here. And if you wanted to bring in your back black pencil, which I'm not going to do that because I want to show you guys you can do all of this with just two pencils. But if you wanted to make this even darker and come in with your black pencil, you could always come in right here where you wanted the inside of that bun to really, really show. And you can even create more of a shadow or you could just keep coming back and doing it with just these two colors. And then I can do the same thing on this side as well. Look how good that looks. I absolutely love it. And here I'm just going to create a little bit more of a shadow to kind of show where her uh, bun is. And I'm just kind of going in a circular motion, not taking away from that texture of her hair that is up a little bit higher. So we have one side of her hair done and I love the way that it turned out. We are going to come back and do the other side of her hair and I'm going to speed that up to music so you guys can just kind of see her hair just come to life.
enjoyed that last part where we were able to just watch it kind of come to life but I love the way that it turned out. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. As you can see, we've got black hair that has lots of highlights in it, and all we did was just use the white of the paper and blended the indigo blue with the dark umber, and her hair looks absolutely beautiful. I hope you all enjoyed it and anything that you've seen me use in this video will be in the description box below. I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.